After reprising the iconic role of Carrie Bradshaw in the Sex and the City reboot, I was feeling on top of the world until I saw her. Kim Cattrall, my stunning and hilarious former coworker. I hadn't talked to Kim since she dragged me for sending my condolences about her brother's death via Twitter. As I watched my own personal internet troll pursue the next chapter of her life, I couldn't help but wonder, in order for me to let go of the past, was I going to have to face it? Hello, Kim. You're looking well. Sarah, you're looking overdressed? Yeah, I'm getting ready to go to a press junket down the street. The reboot of um, Sex and the City? Maybe you've heard of it. You did six seasons and a film. Uh, we made two films. I don't count the second, because it was a flop and low-key racist. Sometimes you gotta get paid, am I right? Okay. People kind of freaked out over the original, so I think they're gonna lose their shit when they see what the girls are up to now. Three 56-year-old white women finding their way in a post-COVID world? Sounds like a blast. It's actually kind of interesting to see how updated our version is now. Carrie Bradshaw, she's still a writer, but now her column is online. A little website you might have heard of called BuzzFeed. I don't get you. I mean, you were a part of an iconic show that was in the cultural zeitgeist. I mean, you made millions. Look, I don't owe you shit. I did my job and I did it well. Just ask the fans who their favorite was. We both know that's a load of crap. The fan favorite was a three-way tie between everybody except Miranda. Sarah, stop acting like you created me. I had a film career before you came along. Babe. You played a mannequin who came to life through magic. Get a grip. Suck my dick. It's just kind of funny to me that you crafted this narrative that I bullied you like we totally got along. And I have the receipts. What are you talking about? The 2003 Golden Globes. How did that fit in there? Kim Control, sex in the city. I'm three women who have literally changed my life. The great Sarah Jessica Parker. The great Sarah Jessica Parker. The great Sarah Jessica Parker. There, you're gonna really call someone that you despise great? I was winning an award. Everybody thanks the cast. Tell me honestly, why wouldn't you do the goddamn show? Look. I don't want to be in a situation where for even one hour, I'm not enjoying myself. So you're saying a acting across from me, it's really that bad? It is. It really is. Well, the truth is the reboot's happening with or without you. And we're bringing Samantha Jones along for the ride. I heard you were going to kill her off. Better. In the reboot, she gets busted for me tooing her former employee, winds up in a maximum security federal prison. That's awful. Not for Samantha Jones. She ends up thriving, gets in a monogamous relationship, and every episode opens with me reading one of her letters from prison. Well, whatever. Best of luck. What network did you say it's gonna be on? Quibi? It's actually on HBO Max, you know, HBO's sexy, younger, yet a little bit confusing cousin. It's gonna be a huge hit. It's gonna have everybody talking. And you will never, ever be a part of it. Okay. Unless, I don't know, do you wanna come back for a guest star maybe? I'm sorry, I can't. Don't hate me. As I left her home, I was reminded of a saying, that people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. But I also think sometimes people come into your life to low-key terrorize you. And I guess that's what I was to Kim. As I walked down that busy Manhattan street lined with palm trees that was in no way Pasadena, I couldn't help but wonder, did that bitch use my iconic dialogue against me? Well, he fitted all the he dogs and went.
when did all the she-dogs, that's the kind of dog that he was.